After fighting for survival against the alien with the blue-collar, working-class crew of the Nostromo, and later alongside a group of highly trained, well-equipped marines, in her third encounter with the xenomorph species, Ripley would find herself having to ally with a less-than-noble group of murderers and rapists on the planet Furina Fury-161. While not an ideal defense party for Ripley, the facility's residents share no admiration for her either, with the group of inmates not being particularly pleased with the fact that fate would bring a woman to their close-knit society, and death along with her. Furina-161 is a small planet orbiting an insignificant binary star in the Neroid sector. The planet orbits at the edge of the system's life zone, but the atmosphere is breathable to humans. Temperatures can range from 100 to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit throughout its irregular 10-day orbit around its binary star. Indigenous life on the windswept planet is extremely limited. Plant life consists of algae, moss, and primitive types of salt grass. The acidic oceans support plankton and a few rudimentary fish-like species. On land, there are insects and anthropods. One of these anthropods, an ectoparasite similar to Pediculus humanus capitis, or head lice, but extremely resistant to treatment, is carnivorous and is drawn to the keratin found in mammalian hair. Inhabitants of Furina 161 were forced to continually shave all body hair. The only industry on Furina 161 was a 16 square kilometer foundry slash penal colony owned and operated by Wayland Yutani. The facility started out as a mining operation in 2118. Natural resources exhausted by 2127, and Wayland Yutani leased the facility and remodeled it as a Class C maximum security penitentiary for double Ys and other habitual offenders. Wayland Yutani contracted to run the prison. At one time, nearly 5,000 inmates were incarcerated there. The company converted part of the facility into a lead works for manufacturing the lining of toxic waste containers and put the prisoners to work. Popular outrage at corporate slave labor and unsafe working conditions forced a scale-down of the operation in 2175. Prisoners were relocated to appropriate facilities. Twenty-two of the former prisoners, having embraced a millenarian, apocalyptic version of Christianity, agreed to remain on Furina 161 as a custodial crew. In charge of the inmates were two wardens and a medical officer employed by Wayland Jutani. Each prisoner was issued a mandatory barcode tattooed on the back of the head using the standard numeric code 3 of 9. Information included reference number for DNA profile, date of birth, case file references, crimes for which the prisoner was convicted, jurisdiction, sentence, and proclivities. Clemens, Jonathan, medical officer, former inmate ID double Y21680. The former Dr. Clemens was initially a prisoner on Furina 161 serving seven years for negligent manslaughter resulting from gross medical incompetence. After serving his time, he elected to stay as the chief medical officer. He was reinstated as a Class 3C medical practitioner. Clemens spent much of his time at the facility alone, not quite fitting in with his warden peers in Andrews and Aaron, and not quite fitting in with the inmates. After Ripley's crash landing on the planet, Clemens quickly grew a rapport with her, trying to help with the mysterious circumstances of her arrival any way he could, and even engaged in a sexual liaison with her. He'd go so far as to trust her with his long, sad story of the morphine addiction that led to his conviction, and was among the first few victims of the xenomorph having been killed in the infirmary while treating Ripley's ailments. Dylan Leonard, 82013, serving a life sentence as a self-confessed murderer and rapist of women. Dylan also acted as a religious leader among the Brotherhood, a group of inmates on Fury 161 who believed that the end of the world was at hand. Superintendent Andrews was tolerant of Dylan's God Squad, as they came to be named, as long as order was maintained. Dylan proved to be a strong ally for Ripley initially by preventing her rape when she was assaulted by a group of prisoners, and later becoming something of a second-in-command when the Xenomorph's presence is confirmed and plans are made to capture and kill it. He would also make a pact with Ripley to kill her after discovering she's carrying the embryo of an alien queen, but is ultimately unable to make good on the deal when he stays behind in the lead mold to stall the creature, facing it directly in a confrontation that took his life. Gallic Walter, 92740, chemically resistant paranoid schizophrenic. Already serving a determinate sentence at Haverhill Asylum Facility for violent behavior, Gallic rose late one night in 2167 and killed nine roommates with a sharpened spoon, later claiming that they'd all begged to be killed. Life sentence. Transferred to Furina 161 in 2168. After witnessing the deaths of Boggs, Reigns, and Clemens, Gallic developed an obsession with the xenomorph creature, and went so far as to release it from the confines of the toxic waste tank after it was captured. He was killed by the alien in this effort. Rains Daniel, 80792, Drug Trafficking and Murder. Part of a crew that killed a family of five during a home invasion in 2161. 
life sentence. Reigns was routinely taking part in surveying duties in dark, unoccupied areas of the facility along with Boggs and Gallic. While not entirely dissatisfied with being assigned with these tasks, he made his dislike for Gallic well known and refused to work with him until Dylan had to intervene and mend the disharmony. Reigns, along with Boggs, were killed in the tunnel by the Xenomorph before its presence was widely known, leaving Gallic as a suspect for his murder until then. Boggs, Edward, 04020, Kidnapping, Assault, and Rape. Life Sentence. Boggs discovered Reigns' dead body in the tunnel along with Gallic, and the two fled frantically for their lives trying to escape the creature. He was killed by the Xenomorph as Gallic witnessed his violent death. Murphy, Thomas, 38503, Murder. Convicted of Grand Theft Space Vehicle, responsible for the deaths of four people, life sentence. Murphy was the first to be killed by the Xenomorph after its birth. While cleaning out a ventilation shaft, he discovered the alien which he initially believed to be a dog, and was horribly burned when the creature spit acid into his face, causing him to tumble into the large fan system and was diced nearly beyond recognition. Jude Allen, 39409, Murder, Life Sentence on the facility, Jude was likely regularly tasked with janitorial duties, often being the first seen to clean large messes with a mop and bucket supply, including after the deaths of Murphy and Superintendent Andrews. With no weapons available in the prison, many of the inmates took to finding whatever means of defense they could find against the alien, in Jude's case, a pair of scissors. He was killed in the lead works when trying to outrun the alien in the group's attempt to lure the beast into the lead mold. Gillis, Ted, nicknamed Junior, 02848, Assault, Rape, and Murder, Life Sentence. Junior was among the prisoners who attempted to rape Ripley and likely the ringleader of this attempt. When the plan to trap the Xenomorph in the toxic waste tank through fire goes awry, Junior was able to distract the creature and lure it inside, sacrificing himself in the process. When the others are able to shut the doors and lock him and the creature inside, his screams of pain could be heard as he was being killed. Dodd, Kevin, 37936, Murder, Gang Affiliate, Life Sentence. Dodd was likely an informant to Superintendent Andrews, feeding him information about Ripley that rises suspicions, particularly about the close relationship she seems to be forming with Clemens, having observed some of their conversations and Newt's autopsy. He was attacked by the alien in the lead works, and although Dylan was able to set him free from the alien's clutches, his wounds were already too severe, and he soon died, and was used to bait the creature into the piston area. Buggy, Eric, 47592, serial killer, abducted and murdered 16 age girls in 2157 through 2158, life sentence. Buggy worked as a cook in the prison's kitchen, and was the first to discover Gallic drenched in blood in the kitchen after the deaths of Boggs and Rains. Buggy was tasked to operate the piston in the lead works, and while in a panic state, he attempts to set off the mechanism early and is talked down by Ripley, later composing himself and making a failed attempt to set the piston off when the Xenomorph moves in on Dodd's corpse. Shortly after this, he was killed by the alien, and his dead body was discovered by Ripley. Troy, Yoshi, 89882, Murder, 25 Year Sentence According to the Alien 3 official novelization, Troy had a brief career as a successful engineer, though when he discovered his wife committing adultery with his superior, he methodically tortured, murdered, and mutilated them both. This pre-conviction career is alluded to in moments where we see Troy repairing and operating the piston controls in the leadworks. He was killed by the Xenomorph in the leadworks during the attempt to lure it into the piston area. Gregor, Peter, 97077, Molestation and Rape, Life Sentence. Gregor was among the group of prisoners who attempted to rape Ripley, and was later helped by her during the Crynucha Settling Explosion, after being engulfed in flames. He later acted with the group, trying to capture the alien in the leadworks by running through the maze-like corridors of the facility. After a startling tumble with Morse in the corridors, the two laughed the event off to ease the tension, at which point the alien does in fact approach, and kills Gregor in front of Morse. Vincent, Mark, 27370, Mass Murder, Life Sentence. Records are spotty as to Vincent's identity, and this has been a topic of debate. Though he was among the first to die in the group's bait-and-chase effort, and his dead body was discovered by David in the leadworks. William Clive, 32201, murder, known gang affiliate, life sentence. He was involved with Ripley's rape attempt at Fury's scrap heap. According to Alien 3's novelization, William was among the few remaining residents on the facility that didn't believe in the religion embraced by the other convicts, and considered himself an atheist. 
While he was among those who survived the explosion in the first attempt to capture the alien, he ultimately met his fate in the leadworks, with his dead body being found amidst the chaos and confusion of the event. Ellis, Carl, nickname Frank, 99243, murder, 20 year sentence. Frank worked in the abattoir alongside Murphy, preparing livestock such as oxen and chickens for the facility's food supply. He was involved in the response to investigate the crashed EEV, and the first to discover the dead bodies of Hicks and Newt, and the damaged remains of Bishop. Frank was given the responsibility of handling the detonator for the fire intended to flush out the xenomorph into the waste tank for capture, but was attacked and killed by the beast, causing the premature explosion. Walking Stick, Arthur, 73840, Drug Manufacture, Murder, Life Sentence. After the explosion and successful capture of the xenomorph in the toxic waste tank, Arthur was tasked as serving as a guard outside the tank's doors, a task assigned by shifts for the remaining survivors. Though it would be on his shift that he encountered Gallic, who was intent on freeing the beast inside, and slit Arthur's throat in the process, killing him instantly. Postlethwaite David, 54017, Rape, 20 Year Sentence while integral in the planning of the gathering of the quiet neutracetylene barrels in the first attempt to capture the xenomorph, he was more vocal in his opposition of the plan to use themselves as bait to lure the alien into the lead mold. While brushing with many close calls in this event, he was eventually killed when the xenomorph crept up behind him while he was standing guard at a sealed doorway. Morse, Robert, 34107, murderer, serving a life sentence, sole survivor of the encounter with the xenomorph on Furina 161. After the events, Morse was transferred to another correctional facility in 2179, location unspecified by company notes. He published Space Beast, an account of the alien encounter in 2183, and he died in 2208. These were not good men, allied with Ripley in her final fight against the Xenomorph, though one could argue that's what makes the story of Alien 3 something unique. A group of forgotten, unwanted sinners in the dark corners of space would end up having to save humanity against the threat of an impossibly dangerous and hostile organism, and through their efforts hindered the plans of the most powerful corporation in the universe. A persistent criticism of Alien 3, however, would simply be that with all these characters involved in the events of the film, all bald, mostly with English accents, it became difficult to distinguish them, which is understandable, particularly in the original theatrically released version of the film. Many of the details in the descriptions outlined here were not even present in the original version, though the 2003 assembly cut version of the film would shed more light and more details to the characters and in general the entire environment of Fury 161 as a whole. Since 2003, many fans of the Alien series have been discovering this alternate version and consider it to be a vast improvement to the original cut. So I guess I'll close with the following. If you're among those who have seen the assembly cut and prefer it, comment below and let me know what scene or scenes made for the best additions. What exactly do you feel contributed most strongly to this version of the film, and what made it better? I'm curious to hear what you think. And as always, thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it, and if you like this video, please be sure to give it a like, and you can also hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest from the channel. If there's a topic you'd like covered, I'd love to hear your suggestions, so comment below. You can also follow Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and Alien Theory YT on Facebook for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.